So in the 20th and 21st century, there are a whole host of medical theories and technologies that cured diseases, gave people more control over their bodies, and extended the European lifespan. Well, that sounds pretty great, right? But here's where I tell you that despite these advances, there were some serious moral and religious debates surrounding them, and I reckon we ought to talk about it. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, let's get to it. So to begin, let me just give you a taste of some of these new technologies, and then afterward, we'll look at the social and moral questions that they pose. The first medical technology we'll consider is the birth control pill. It was developed in large part by the funding and support of American feminist Margaret Sanger and pretty quickly came to Europe. And it really was a revolution for women. The pill contained hormones that when ingested could keep a woman from getting pregnant or at least decrease the likelihood drastically. As I mentioned in my video on second wave feminism, many women heralded this pill as a means by which they could gain control over their reproductive organs. The second medical technology we'll consider is the increasing safety of the abortion procedure. Now abortion itself was of course a very ancient practice and was in no way new. But what was new was the scientific precision with which the procedure could be done. With antiseptic tools and antibiotics that could guard against infection, abortion became a far safer procedure for those women who chose to elect it. The third medical technology we'll consider is fertility treatment. For much of European history, if a woman was unable, for whatever reason, to have a child, it was considered a kind of judgment from God. It was God who opened the womb and God who closed it. But in the 20th century, scientists began to understand the causes of infertility and develop medical procedures to address it. And probably the most revolutionary was a procedure called in vitro fertilization. Now, in vitro is Latin for in glass, and the idea here is that through the use of highly technical equipment, an egg and a sperm could be united outside a woman's body, which is to say, in a glass test tube. That's why these babies were often called test tube babies, the first of which was born in England in 1978. And finally, the fourth technology to consider is genetic engineering. Now to be fair, genetic engineering, so to speak, has also had a long history. Like when farmers decided to breed their best cows, or you know, whatever, so that good cows would be born, that's technically genetic engineering. But in the 20th century, scientists discovered that they could actually alter the genetic code of the DNA of organisms. Now this led in some cases to scientists being able to cure certain genetic diseases, but it was not without controversy. And speaking of which, let's go on to the objections people had about these new medical technologies and theories. Now, in addition to the medical technologies I already mentioned, there were a metric buttloads of other medical interventions that caused people to have longer lives. And you would think that would be great, and it is, but these medical treatments caused some significant questions about society. For example, remember what I said in another Unit 9 video, namely that in the post-war era, many European countries became welfare states, which is to say they provided medical care to their populations from cradle to grave. And so the problem with people living longer lives is that they end up costing more money to care for medically. And remember that states paid for the medical care through taxes, and so as people began living longer, more taxes were required to continue offering health care. And if history has taught us anything, ain't nobody want to pay more taxes. So that was an example of a social question that arose because of new medical interventions. But now let's get to those juicy moral questions and debates. As far as birth control and abortion went, the main moral objector here was the Roman Catholic Church. The Church continued to hold the belief that God opened and closed the womb, and thus to forcibly close the womb with the pill was essentially acting as if you were God himself. And in terms of abortion, Catholics believe that life began at the moment of conception. Like as soon as the sperm fertilized the egg, you had a human being. And according to the Bible, human beings are made in the image of God, and more to the point, by the agency of God. Therefore, by their reckoning, to abort a child was tantamount to murder. The Catholic Church also strongly protested in vitro fertilization for similar reasons. If God closes the womb, who are we to forcibly open it with a test tube? And then in terms of genetic engineering, a big objection had to do with eugenics, which is essentially the process for weeding out the undesirables in society and encouraging the multiplication of the desirable. Not to put too fine a point on it, but Hitler's final solution was considered an experiment in eugenics because he wanted to eliminate whole races of people and leave behind only the inheritors of Aryan genealogy. But now with genetic engineering, scientists could alter human characteristics at the level of the fertilized egg and that was scary to a lot of people. All right, click here to keep reviewing for unit nine. Since that national exam is coming up, click here to grab my AP Euro review pack, which has everything you need to get a five on that exam. And I'll catch you on the flip flop. I'm Lerout.